Hi, I'm Lizelle Crowley and I'm here at Cool Tools to show you how to use a wonderful product called Scratch Foam Board to get your own unique artwork into your metal clay designs. The tools we're going to use today are a rolling pin, templates, pencil and paper, Zim or Zim ball stylus tools and that is spelled X-I-E-M, scissors, cool slip, packing tape, and the star of the show, scratch foam board. Let's get started. And I have these wonderful templates to choose from. And there are many, many lovely shapes, but I'll just pick this one for our purposes today. And I start by just making an outline of the outer shape. Now, I do want to say that you do not need to use a template if you would like to just draw your shape freehand. I just find by drawing my outer shape with the template, it gives me a good starting place. Once I get my outline drawn, I then will come in and fill in with my design. I use very simple designs. You can make these designs as ornate as you'd like. And if you want, you can even use straight edges, but I do everything kind of freehand. Um, so I'll start by drawing some lines. I'll do a spiral or two. And again, remember, you can also go online and work um, with Illustrator, or you can find a design that you really like. In uh, Dover Books are wonderful um, for design sources. But it's really easy to make some unique designs and they look wonderful when they're impressed in the metal clay because they make an embossed line. And that embossed line is a wonderful thing to use in your metal clay designs. So very simply, I'm just creating a design. And later I'll show you how I will impress that into the scratch foam. Now I'm going to show you how to prepare the scratch foam for using for your metal clay designs. This is the size the scratch foam comes in. Um, it's a wonderful size, but it's a little too big for what we use it for in, in metal clay. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut it down, just with any pair of scissors. It cuts very easily. And I typically like to cut it down to about this size, about the size, maybe a little bit bigger than a Cool Tools texture tile. Now, if you look carefully at the scratch foam, which is really basically just con uh, compressed foam, one side is a little smoother and shinier than the other. That is the side I prefer to use because it gives me a smoother line. So this is the side we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is put a little packing tape on the back side, and that just strength strengthens it and gives it a little more stability. Try to keep the packing tape from getting tangled. Everybody knows what that's like. Now I'm not going to bother to cover the whole thing, but basically in the area where my design is going to be. Next I'm going to turn it back over to the smooth side and apply a little bit of Cool Slip. Just a little. And rub that in. And because I like the foam to be as compressed as possible, I'll also take my rolling pin and just roll over it a couple of times. And I feel like that just compresses the surface and evenly spreads the lubrication over the top. Now I'm going to show you how to start impressing the scratch foam when you're working directly with the scratch foam without tracing a design. This is a piece of scratch foam that's been prepared. I have the packing tape on the back and I've lubricated the top. I'm also going to be working with these wonderful ball stylus, Zim or Zim ball stylus tools that Cool Tool sells. Now these are my preferred tools for impressing the scratch foam for several reasons. You can, all, you can use a ballpoint pen, but I don't like the way the ink is left behind and it only gives you one point size. With the ball stylus, you don't have to deal with the ink and you also have a choice of many sizes of balls which allow you to vary the width of your lines so it creates more visual interest in your designs. 
When I'm working directly on the scratch foam, I also start with a template just to get my basic shape in. And again, Cool Tools has an amazing assortment of templates that are perfect for this. I'm just going to randomly choose one. Um, I think I'll work with this one. And bear in mind that um, these designs can be used over and over and over again. And you can, the wonderful thing about these templates also is that they come in different sizes. So say you wanted to do a pendant and earring set, you could do a larger piece, a larger design for the pendant and then smaller designs for your earrings and have a nice matching set. So I'm going to work probably in this size because I want to create a pendant design. And I can make more than one design on this size sheet of scratch foam. The scratch foam can be used over and over again as long as you take care of it because it gouges very easily. So I'm going to begin with a medium tip. And there's a couple of things to keep in mind when you're doing scratch foam. One is you want to anchor your template on your foam firmly with your non-dominant hand. The other thing is you want to use a light touch. So as you are impressing, you want to go around more than one time. And each time you press a little harder. And if you go too hard, too fast, you run the risk of gouging the soft foam. So there's my outer design. Now I'm going to come in and I can use an even finer tip if I want to have a fine line design and just begin to draw my designs. It's a funny little squeaking sound that it's making. And again, I'm retracing my line. And again, I do, I tend to do very simple designs. I use a lot of swirls and lines, but you can do whatever you want. You could draw leaves, flowers, hearts, whatever your heart desires, you can put into the scratch foam. And I can, if I want to vary the line, I can come in now with the wider point. And anytime I do this, it's going to look like a little ball of clay on top when I all of these lines that I'm impressing will be actually embossed lines in your metal clay pieces and that's wonderful if you like to enamel or add color like um, alcohol inks or glass paints it gives you nice little areas that you can color and give the look of enamel or it actually already gives you the cells that you can use for your enamel so these designs can be used in a variety of ways I'm just gonna make a smaller ball right there and let's see, let's put a little squiggly line here. And that's how you directly impress into the scratch foam using the ball stylus. Now I'm going to show you how to use that paper design I created earlier to trace a design onto the scratch foam. Pretty much everything is done the same except that you're using your paper design as a guide. First, I'm going to create the outer outline using the same template I used to create the design and that's just going to give me a nice clear outer edge so you want to anchor your template onto the scratch foam I like to use a wider ball stylus because it gives me a nice framed look to my piece and again you want to use a gentle touch when you first start you don't want to press too hard because you could gouge the scratch foam so I'm going to go around Two or three times should be enough to deepen that line and give you a nice crisp outline. Once that's done, I can bring my design in and hold it over my outline and just begin to use this and trace over it. And this will be enough to create an impression in the piece. And this just means you can play with your design before you start and be more comfortable with it before you're actually impressing the scratch foam. And you see I'm doing it kind of quick and dirty but as I take this away, I can get in closer and just run my stylus back over those lines to deepen them.
And this will work just as well with a printout from the computer. You can also draw on vellum so you can see through it. And that's how you would create a design in the scratch realm using a pre-drawn or printed out design. You can use any metal clay with scratch foam, but today I'm going to use our clay silver, which is one of my favorite clays to work with. It's wonderful, it's flexible, and it takes the texture beautifully. Now I'm going to show you how to use the scratch foam plate that you've created to roll into your metal clay. Now you can use the scratch foam just like any other texture. You want to use a rolling pin that's been lubricated and you want to use the clay thickness rolling frames that Cool Tool makes. You also want to have your template that you created the original design with. I'm going to start by rolling the clay six cards thick. So I'm going to take my clay and roll it out just like you would for anything else. I like to rotate my clay so it stretches evenly in all directions. And once you achieve the thickness of the um, six card thick rolling frame, you take your original design and you lay your clay on top. Now you do want to lubricate this, but because I just made this scratch foam plate, it already has lubricant in it. So I'm going to lay my clay on top. It doesn't matter if it completely covers the design because as I roll, the clay will stretch and encompass the design. I'm going to take the red um, thickness rolling frame, which is three cards thick, lay it on top of my scratch foam and make sure it is on top of the scratch foam. And I'm going to start on one edge and roll in one direction with a very firm, even pressure. And as I unroll that, you can see the finished design. The final step is to take my original template that I used to create the design, line it up, and use the ultimate clay pick, which Cool Tools created. It's one of my favorite metal clay tools of all time. Hold it perpendicular and just cut out my design. Sometimes I'll go around twice just to be on the safe side. Pull my clay away and there's my finished design. And you can see how every impressed line in the scratch foam is a raised or embossed line on the metal clay. Here's the finished piece after it's been fired, polished, and patinaed. I like to give my pieces a satin finish, but you could finish it any way you finish your metal clay jewelry. I've put a jump ring through the hole, and now I'm just going to thread a chain through that. And we have a lovely finished pendant with your own artwork in metal clay. Visit our learning center at www.cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for the email list to be the first to hear about new videos, products, contests, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.